Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be doing a front wheel bearing on a 2016 Mazda 3. It's the 2.5 liter S Grand Touring trim. We're doing this ourselves because wheel bearing alone costs about $90 to $100. And if you went to do this to a shop, you'd be paying significantly more. And if you are on a budget, it's just a simple job. Really, at the end of the day, there's probably really only about 10 nuts and bolts and stuff that you're going to be playing around with. The biggest scary thing is going to be really getting the bearing out. It's, it's a hub assembly on this one, so it's easier than a press fit, but um, we've got a really fancy trick to get it out of the knuckle, which is great, and you'll see that. And I'm gonna go ahead and rate this as a one do job. I think it's gonna take me one Mountain Dew to get through it. So let's begin. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and crack all the lug nuts on the tire while it's on the ground, while the car's on the ground, because then the tire's not gonna rotate. It's just a lot easier. So I'm gonna grab breaker bar and a 21 millimeter socket and toss some weight on here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set the e-brake on the car so it doesn't go anywhere. And we're gonna take a jack, slap it under the factory jacking point, get the car up off the ground. You really just need the tire off the ground a little bit, but I'm gonna go a little higher. Always slap a jack under there. Give the car a tug, make sure it's not gonna fall off on you. We're gonna go ahead and pull the rest of those lug nuts the rest of the way off with our 21 millimeter. Maybe a ratchet. Sometimes once you get all the lug nuts off your car, the tire can be pretty stuck on there. This is a newer vehicle, so I doubt it's gonna to be too bad, but if you do have something that's stuck on there, you wanna apply some good soft blows on the outside of the tire. This one's pretty much ready to fall right off. But something like a soft hammer, or what sometimes works pretty well, is your spare tire, because it's a nice soft hit. You kinda of just grab it in your hands, swing it in your tire, and pop it right off. All right, so now that I have a lot of the <clears throat> fasteners visible that we're gonna be taking off, I'm gonna go ahead and slap some penetrating oil on there and give it maybe five or 10 minutes before I get to the rest. We're gonna do the axle nut, it's gonna have to come off. Also, on the rear side, there are two bolts that hold the entire caliper bracket on, and then there are four bolt heads kind of all at the corners of where the axle boot comes in. Those are the bolts that hold the wheel bearing hub assembly in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some on there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and break free the axle nut on here because it's front and center and it's easy to get to. We're gonna go ahead and get a nice big breaker bar and our 32 millimeter socket. Slap it on there and we're gonna give it a nice tug a tug. Oh dear. So I could just use a nice big impact gun like this to bust that nut off of there, but not everybody has these and they're a more expensive tool. So if you're on a budget, like we said before, we're doing this because we're on a budget. We just have a tool like this because we do this stuff a lot and it's in our interest as a good return for us to have a tool like this. But before I go to do this, we're gonna bring Steve in because Steve weighs at least a little bit more than me. We're gonna have him give it a shot. Impact wrench it is. Okay, so that was a bit of an experience. We've done quite a few axle nuts, and this is the first time that we've actually had to use an impact gun. Most of the time, something as simple as a pipe on the end of a ratchet will get the job done with enough weight. In order to get some easy access to the bolts that are holding on the entire brake assembly here, you're gonna want another breaker bar or something in there because they're gonna be on there pretty tight, but you're not gonna be able to fit that into your wheel well. So, pretty easy fix is if you put your car on accessory, you can just rotate your tire all the way to lock, and then you'll be able to fit a breaker bar in there. As far as the braking system, you have your actual caliper here, and it's mounted into this bracket. So we're gonna take the caliper off first, but to ensure that we don't damage the brake line, because it's flexible cabling here, but uh, you don't wanna stress it out. So there's a retainer clip right here. You just wanna take a flathead screwdriver and work it out whatever way works for you. As long as you get something back in there. 
There you go. Set that aside. And you're gonna pull this towards you and it slides right out. So once we get this, we're gonna take the caliper off first. And these are two, let's see, it's a 13 metric. Once we break this off, we're gonna to have to be very careful because we don't wanna let this fall down to the ground or anything because it's gonna stress this line, maybe even break it, which is very not good. So we will take these out. So we're pulling those fasteners out, adding them to the pile. I'm gonna pull our assembly off and then I'm gonna take a zip tie, or you can use a bungee cord, whatever you'd like. And I like to mount these right up to your coil spring because it's right there and it's easy to get something on without a whole lot of difficulty. It's a little heavy though, so you wanna be careful. And again, just focus on not stressing out this line. You wanna see nice and good slack in there the whole time that you're working on the rest of this job. Best definitely pay attention to when you are moving the wheels from lock to lock to get access to the different bolts on the back here. You're making sure you're not binding this up anywhere because that could cause some serious problems if you break this line. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and take out these two big 17 millimeter bolts and they're what's holding in the entire caliper bracket. You're definitely gonna want a breaker bar for this one because these boys are in here pretty tight. So find a nice angle and give it some juice. And the other. And we'll slap this on a ratchet for the rest of the way because it's a lot quicker. So with these bolts free, I'm gonna add them to our pile and your bracket should slide right off. Might be a little hung up on the rotor, so you might need to give it a little bit of elbow grease, but it'll come right off like that. We're gonna set this to the side now. Now with that caliper bracket off, next is gonna be the rotor. And with corrosion and rust and whatever, this rotor is gonna be on here pretty tight. If they're not really seized to the surface, sometimes just kind of hitting them side to side like that will get them off, but I just had the other one off not too long ago and they're on there pretty tight. So what you can do is you wanna apply a soft blow to any of the sides of this rotor, nothing in the middle here. And all we really have is a big four pound hammer, but you don't wanna do steel to steel, that's not a soft blow. So I'm gonna pad the impact with this chunk of two by four. And you wanna give it a nice big mean few hits and it should pop right off. Just like that. Just slide that rotor off. Be careful with it. Try not to get it too dirty if you're gonna reuse it. I plan on swapping it out pretty soon, so I'm not concerned about it. Now, with the rotor off, we can see these are the ends of those four bolts there on each kind of like a corner here. And then this whole piece, that's the hub assembly. So I got some penetrating oil on the other side of these bolt heads, but they were covered up by the rotor. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more penetrating oil on this side, and then we'll give it uh, another five minutes or so to let that set. All right, so it's been about five minutes. We're gonna go ahead and take our breaker bar and a 14 millimeter socket. We're gonna snug it up in the back here on top of one of them bolt heads with the tire or what used to be a tire all the way to the lock on the left. It's gonna be easy to get these front two. When we're done, we'll swap to the other side, go to the other lock and we'll get the back two. So we're gonna go ahead and take our bar and, and the other. And then we'll swap to a ratchet now that they're a little bit easier to get out and finish them off. So with the wheel at the other lock, we're gonna go ahead and break through the other side and then remove them with a ratchet after they're free. So, I've got a problem where with this only being able to angle in really 180 degree increments, you can't always move the breaker bar as much as you want. So what we're gonna swap to is a cheaper option where I'm gonna use a ratchet with a pipe on the end because I can move this in much finer increments. And like I said, it's cheaper, so if you don't have a breaker bar, this will work out anyways. Just like that. All right, so with all four of those bolts out, this hub assembly is no longer fastened to this knuckle here. 
but with rust and corrosion and how tight it was torqued in there, you could spend all day long beating and pounding, hammering it from the back, whatever you want to do, and it's basically not going to come off. We've had a lot of trouble with these in the past, so that quick and easy trick that I promised you at the beginning of the video, which works really well, is you want to get yourself a smaller hammer, like a ball pin or something like this, that fits between the studs, and then one of these <clears throat> extrusions here that holds the actual bolt. Then you're gonna take a bigger hammer, you're gonna pound the back of that to rotate the hub relative to the knuckle. So if you wanna look in here real quick, you can see we're eclipsing. This whole thing is rotating. So I'm gonna give a few more whacks and it seems to work best if you go all in the same direction and hopefully it'll just pop right out. Just like that. Be careful, by the way, when you're ripping this off that you don't bust out your ABS sensor. Like I said, this is the S Grand Touring model, so it's got all these electronics down inside here, and you just wanna be careful that you don't take that out. With the hub assembly out, you've got this guard that sits in between the hub assembly, which is really between the rotor and then the knuckle, because you've got, like I said, electrical connection, you've got the brake line and stuff behind there, you don't want any contact there. And you don't want, don't want, don't want to just grab onto this and yank it off, because if you twist it, then you're gonna either push it into the rotor, which is a rotating piece, or you might push it into a cable here or something like that. So that one was a lot easier. <laughs> I did the other side not too long ago, and um, if it's stiff and it doesn't want to come off in there, you can always take a flat-headed screwdriver and run it right around the exterior like this, a little bit harder than that. Scrape away some of that rust, because that's what's stopping this from popping right off, but this one was easy. Before we go throwing new parts in here, like you can see there's there's all kind of crap in there. We're gonna take like a wire brush and probably some compressed air. We're gonna go ahead and clean that out just so that the next bearing assembly slides right in and easy. We'll also probably add a little bit of just general grease to this spline because that's gonna make it a little bit nicer when that bearing uh, assembly because you got a mating spline inside there and we slap it on. We want it to be as smooth as possible. Just gonna get a little bit of just a general grease and apply it to those splines. It's gonna make it just a little bit easier to slide that new hub and bearing assembly on top of there. We are ready to slap all the new materials in. I've cleaned up all these surfaces. And also one of the last things that I like to do is before you put your bolts back in and reuse them, grab a wire brush, something like that. Clean a little bit of that rust off of there. Just tidy it up, maybe hit it with some air. And Run a little bit of blue Loctite. I'm running blue mainly because these aren't wild. They need to stick in there and they don't have like red Loctite on them or something. You'll see with the caliper bracket bolts, those have red Loctite on them from the factory. So I'm gonna use red on there, but blue is a more mild one. So I've got all of my bolts lined up here and ready to go. I have my new hub assembly. I'm gonna go ahead and this is gonna mount on here just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab a bolt. Since I have this unlocked to the right, I'm gonna take one that's on this easier side for me to reach. I'm gonna stick a bolt through there and then grab my wheel bearing. And these are like ambidextrous up down kind of mount so you don't gotta worry about which direction they're going in there. I'm gonna fit it onto the spline of the axle here. Then we're gonna line this bolt up, which is a little bit of a process. With all four of those bolts just barely started, we actually centered the wheels because with the axle binding up at that angle when it was at lock, it was a little bit more difficult to center the hub and get the four bolts in. But I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them all in from the back with my ratchet. But I'm gonna do it so that I do a little bit on each one, kind of like you would put on a wheel, kind of in the start pattern, just because this is more or less a press fit into the knuckle and you want it to go in pretty straight. If you go and hammer one, one bolt down and then you start going to the other, it's gonna come in at an angle and it's not gonna sit right and you run the risk of stripping something out uh, or doing something you don't like, like snapping a bolt head off or just really jacking up your wheel bearing, which is gonna completely remove any need for why you did the job in the first place. So just bear that in mind. All right, with all those bad boys torqued down nice and tight, we're gonna slap our rotor back on. It's nice and easy. If you're feeling up to it, you can always slap some anti-seize on that new hub surface. 
That'll make it a lot easier if you plan to ever change your rotors by yourself. It's a great way to save some more money. I plan on swapping these in very, very not so distant future, so I'm not gonna put any anti-seize on them. But once our rotor's in place, we're gonna go ahead and fit our caliper bracket back in place. And I've already got my bolts for that all ready to go. It's as simple as sliding it back on top of the rotor. And then you're gonna grab a bolt. Stick it in there and lining these up can be a little difficult, but with a little bit of looking at where your bolt's going, it's always easy enough to thread it in. And you're gonna do the same at the bottom. And you'll torque those down again nice and tight. All right, so with the caliper bracket in place, I just wanted to remind you once again, I used red Loctite on those because uh, definitely don't want those backing out. I'm gonna go ahead and have whatever means you use to hold your caliper up there. Go ahead and free it. I'm gonna bring it down, slide it back into place over top of the pads, which it might be a little bit rough. It's gonna definitely be impossible if you happen to, if you have the caliper off and you hit your brake pedal, then that piston there is gonna smush down and you're gonna have a heck of a time squeezing it back over. Best way to get it back out with a caliper that's just, you know, one piston like this. Just grab like a nice big C clamp or something like this and you'll just smush it down, it's rather easy. So, with this in place, grab our hardware, line it up as best you can, and feed it in. You gotta be careful, because these rods that move back and forth with the motion of the brakes, they've got this uh, bolt head face count on them, and that's gonna rotate when you're bolting it back in. So just go ahead and keep a hold on that, and you might need to get a wrench and stick it on there. Most of the time, probably not. I'm gonna go ahead, grab the bottom, and I'm gonna use blue Loctite on these just to make sure they're not gonna back out during operation. So we'll go ahead and tighten those up. Now we're gonna go ahead and be absolutely certain not to forget to reattach our brake line to this uh, intermediate bracket that we've got here on the strut tower. And just like the opposite of before, it's gonna slide into place. A little bit of rust and corrosion might make it a little difficult for you. And it's got a flat on one side, so it really only fits in one orientation. We go ahead and grab our retainer and I'm gonna use something softer, like the wooden handle on the end of my hammer here, and just tap it back into place. So we're gonna go ahead, we're going to straighten the tire back out, and at this point, we're ready to remount the wheel, tighten down our lug nuts, drop it off the jack, and we'll be ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my treble light out of there, and on the way out, I'm gonna go ahead and check, make sure that none of our other connections came loose or are gonna rub into anything. And we look good, so. Let's go ahead and get the tire back on. All right, so joke's on me. Before we get the wheel on there, we're gonna go ahead and slap our axle nut back on. Uh, some people might argue that it's important. That's on you if you wanna run without it. But um, it went, it came off pretty stiff, as you recall, and we could run maybe some anti-seize on there or something like that. But this specific setup on this generation of the Mazda 3 doesn't have any kind of locking feature. Like on some of the older models, there's actually a trough that kind of runs through the threads on the actual axle and you would pound the wall of the nut into it so that it actually locked in place. But I don't have any of that on this model, so I'm not gonna run any anti-seize or something like that because I don't wanna run the risk of it backing off. So I'm gonna snug it up real quick. I'm gonna use the impact gun, but a ratchet will do the same. It's just it's gonna be a little quicker for me to do it this way. And then we'll grab the breaker bar and we'll set the torque on it. Pretty generally, I'm not gonna stand by this, but about 200 foot-pounds is decent for an axle like this. So, um, depending on how much you weigh, you can do just a little bit of simple math, and what we've calculated, pretty simply for 200 foot-pound, is if you get a 200 pound person and you stick them one foot up this, up this uh, breaker bar, you have 200 pounds acting across one foot, so that's effectively 200 foot-pounds. So we're gonna have a 200 pound sole stand right here and put their full weight on it. They're not gonna jump up and down or anything like that because we're gonna have exactly 200 pounds one foot from the axis. All right, so real quick, before I put the tire back on, I'm just gonna, Wipe away some of this crap that came off, rust incursion or whatnot, just so it's not getting things a little nasty. Put a tire back on, pretty straightforward. Line it up on the studs. And you grab your lug nuts and slap them on there. Tighten them down in a star pattern, just like every online manual, forum, or car owner's manual is going to tell you to do. All right, put the tire back in place and torque down. I'm going to go ahead and jack the car up off of my jack post. Get out, load the car, and you're ready.
ready to drive away. Thanks for watching.